Uh, so you reformed Medicare in 1996. Why is it, why is it a mess today? Well, there's no fun implementing the reforms. I mean, they deliberately, look, the core, of, the core of the reforms is very simple. Many years ago, I went and spoke to an American Medical Association group, and I was wildly received because I followed Jay Rockefeller. And they were so excited to have a conservative after that. that they just, they, you know, and, and so I got up and I got this really wonderful standing ovation. And I opened my speech by saying, look, I'm glad you are very positive about my visit, but let me tell you something. You're either going to go to Walmart or you're going to go to Canada. You're not going to stay in the middle. You're either going to be in a competitive world of real prices and real information, or you're going to be in a government-controlled bureaucracy. But you're not going to try to play games and have the best of both worlds. And that's the core crisis. If you had a system where you knew in advance what things cost, and where you could compare prices, you would overnight begin to reduce the cost of health If you had a system where you, you designed it so that people had a couple thousand dollars that was in effect their money, and they were actually shopping. Now this doesn't work if you have a stroke. It doesn't work if you're in a car wreck. I, I, I get that. But it works in terms of almost every identifiable discretionary expense. In addition, if you had a system where you were rewarded when you were intelligent. Jeb Bush had a great experiment in Florida. They took Medicaid members who were asthmatic or diabetic. And they said, if you're compliant all year and you don't use the emergency, we'll give you a Christmas bonus. And they discovered a shocking thing, which was that poor people responded to money. <laughs> And they had a very substantial change in behavior. Because people suddenly realized, oh, you mean when I go to the emergency room, it actually costs them? I didn't realize. I thought that was just free. And so you really begin to rethink the system. The second thing you've got to do to really save Medicare, to save the whole health system, I think, is you have to have total reform. Um, I helped found the Center for Health Transformation. And we did a study with the Gallup Poll and with uh, Jackson Health. And we interviewed doctors about what percent of the procedures they went through were defensive medicine that they would never have ordered without the threat of a lawsuit. The estimate came back, and we were all stunned. The estimate came back $800 billion a year. Medical schools now teach defensive medicine. They say, here's how you make sure you've done every extra test that if you had to, if you had to admit it in court, and will never be able to say you were negative. Well, this is just pure waste. And so you start going down the road and you find a series of steps. The other thing we found in our, in our because we studied Medicare a lot in 1996, <coughs> seniors like the right to choose, but they hate being forced to choose. If they're forced to choose, they get scared because they figure you're doing something to them and they can't figure out what it is. But if they have the right to choose, they get intrigued. Now, I'll give you an example. Imagine that Medicare ran Walmart. You know, because there, there's this whole thing in the, in, the, in the liberal psychology that says seniors can't be asked to make too many decisions. After all, they're seniors. And I said, you know, my mother-in-law likes to go to Walmart. Can you imagine if we said to her, because there are 258,000 items in the superstore. Um, we've decided that there should be a limited number of aisles available after 65. <laughs> because, you know, now, and we're going to let you go to the other aisles if you're accompanied by a guardian or a child or, or, or one of your children. But, but we don't want seniors to be drowning in too many decisions. This is the liberal mindset. So I would open up Medicare so that seniors had the right to have more choices. And they had the right to look at more ways of solving their problems. And you would find people applied common sense. And you would find, and I'd also allow people to use their own resources. I mean, why would you say to Bill Gates' father, you are not allowed to pay for any of your health after 65? And, and that's what we do. The, the Medicare is more restrictive than the British National Health Service. And it was written that way so that the government could control it.